We don't cower. We don't run for the hills. We don't quit. Baby, 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 and honey, 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 and sugar, sugar, sugar. It's a very confusing time in America because the wrong president for America is the wrong president for the world. Hey, here's Nikki Six. Hey, what's going on? You know who he is? It's Michael. From Neon Sunsets. And you see it heute das Interview mit Nikki Six aus der Schweiz. Have fun. <laughs> Heute Neon Sunset aus der Schweiz äh, mit Nikki Six von 6am spielen heute mit Korn zusammen in Pratteln. And now Nikki is with me. Hey, Hi, how are you? Happening, man? <laughs> It's great to meet you. Um, Thank you. When you formed um, 6am in, yeah. in 2007, it's yeah. almost nine years ago, and whenever I saw you through the years, I thought there's a special chemistry between you guys. Yeah. When I saw Motley Crue, I saw a gang of guys going mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. and when I saw 6M, it's like a couple of friends right. with, with a very special. Yeah, it's definitely a different, a different energy. But I think that with musicians, you know, if uh, me and you and two other musicians got together, it would be a different chemistry yeah. than if you and two other guys got together. Because that's how uh, music is human. Right, it's human and like our ideas, like what we're influenced by or even like what we grew up with and things that we're into, movies, video games, culture, religion, it all plays part of it, you know. So I think that, you know, Motley was like-minded in that gang mentality, especially coming out, you know, it's like all or nothing, you know, and, and 6am is just like a different interpretation of of uh, creativity and I think that you know if you put James and DJ and another bass player and another guitar player together uh, it would be a whole different thing as well yeah. you know I love that about music and I love it um, how you um, push the boundaries of music listening to the new record I uh, thought it's um, a very honest and uh, personal record like the ones before as well of 6am and I wondered is it hard for you to be so open-minded so uh, open-hearted to the crowd with your lyrics I, I guess that's just that's how I've always been as a lyricist or a songwriter. I, I don't really know the, the other way. If you listen to songs like Primal Scream, yeah. Shout at the Devil, um, you know, On With The Show, Too Fast For Love, it's, it's all pretty, you know, top of mind of what you're feeling at that time in your life or yeah. what you were maybe reflecting upon. And the thing about a body of work is you can like look at it and go, so this is what I was like as a teenager. Yeah. I was reflecting on it in my 20s. This is what I was like, you know, in my 30s. I was reflecting on my 20s. And you, and you know, whether it was like partying and that whole lifestyle and then like getting through that and surviving that and getting into things like Dr. Feelgood and survival of drugs and alcohol and heroin addiction and finding like, uh, a, like a, a new lease on life. And you, you, you look back in time and you go, wow, look at all the, like, the journey. It's like, it's like reading a history book. Yeah. I think it's fascinating. And if you just write baby, 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 and honey, 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 and sugar, 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 no one really gets to know the artist. They yeah. get to know the formula. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that's what's important to me, really, is to let people in. Yeah. When I read the uh, Heroin Diaries and listened to the, to the first 6am uh, record, which was the soundtrack, um, I wondered why, or I tried to figure out why the glamorous life of many rock stars led so many of them into such nightmares. Yeah. Well, today's a great example. There's absolutely nothing to do today. If we weren't doing interviews, we just lay around, lay around. We're going to play, um, you know. Horn's given us 50 minutes, which is fantastic. Usually, you know, we, we don't get that much time. And then, you know, we're gonna hang out and watch some corn because we're fans of theirs. They asked me to come on stage and play blind, so I'm excited about that. Sure. And then after that, what do we do? Yeah. Till tomorrow. And that's when the drugs and the alcohol and the girls, it's like you're bored, it's like it gets you through another day. And you have to try to realign yourself with uh, the universe a little bit as you are around for a while. You realize that that doesn't work anymore. It actually worked for a long time. It was a blast. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, it was a lot of fun. But I think I'd do it now and I'd just be like, this isn't really who I am anymore. Yeah. So we we do different things, you know, as, as people. You know, we grow, we change. Some people isolate, some people engage more. Mm -hmm. And um, I love it. I love the ex I love the experience of life. Yeah. 
Um, you decided that a great career of Motley Crue must come to an end and you focus all your energy upon new projects like 6IM. Mm -hmm. What comes to your mind when you read about something like ACDC continuing without Brian Johnson instead uh, with yeah. Axl Rose? That's strange. Well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much about the original band as much as possible. ACDC, for me, you know, growing up with Bon Scott was like such an important band and Brian actually really came in and, and the hardest job in the world. And really the band really went to the next level. Brian's a wonderful guy. And I couldn't see life without Bon, but then I could never see life without Brian. And yeah. Axel's in, he's singing and he's a great singer and I think he's gonna do a great job. And I don't know if Brian will come back or not come back, but I'm actually, I think it's pretty cool. It's a new experience for the fans, also. <laughs> yeah, you know, Axel's a, a, an interesting character, has been a bit reclusive, and um, of all the people in the business have tried to get the original Guns N' Roses mm -hmm. back together, they could never get it back together. They got a version yeah. of it back together, and you can see Axel looks happier, you know? He's, do, 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 they're gonna go out and they're gonna play, and um, he's gonna go do that ACDC stuff, and I don't know Axel really that well. I mean, I'm a bit more ease, you know, they open for Motley Crue. He's always sweet to me. He's always kind of shy and um, respectful. And uh, I'm happy for him. He looks happy. Yeah, and looks healthy. He looks healthy. You know, he looks happy, man. It's like <laughs> he missed doing what he what he what he's doing right now. And um, I'm sure having Slash and Duff by his side feels really good. Yeah. So it's it's badass. Good for him. And good for Slash and Duff too. Absolutely. Good for yes. the fans. Absolutely. I'm um, going back to the 6 a.m. record. Prayers for the damn. Mm -hmm. The lyrics um, and the music, but the lyrics especially are great again. And I took some parts of the lyrics, and I like to ask you about some of the topics you've written about. Okay. That way, okay for you. Um, let's start with Rise. The song's about never giving up and yes. then uh, stand, standing up for yourself. Yeah. Um, you experience some ups and downs uh, through your life. What, what pushes you to never surrender? What gets you going? The thing is, um, we know that there's adversity on the path. And once we've experienced it, it hurts. All different versions of that. You know, I could probably ask you, you could tell me five things that really hurt in your life. Yes. And you, you found that you're still sitting here and you're talking to me and you survived. And once you've done it a few times, you're like, I, I can survive that. You realize that the human nature is to survive. We don't cower. We don't run for the hills. We don't quit. We might temporarily. But then we rise back up and we stand back up and we survive. We have to survive ourselves. And in a sense, it's really a call to arms to that part of the human nature. It's a very strong song. It's uh, like an anthem. Really I'm, I'm glad people connected so, with it. We, yeah. we threw our heart and soul into this album and that song kind of took on a life of its own. And it's a, it's a very confusing time in America. Yeah. Um, volatile time. I, I have my political views that I'll, you know, keep to myself right now. But it's a bit embarrassing. Yeah. Um, what's happening and for people to feel hopeless, I think it's the worst thing they could feel. So people should vote. They should mm -hmm. stand up and rise up against what they think is going to be wrong for our country and wrong for the world because the wrong president for America is the wrong president for the world. Yeah. And we need to pull together and I think at the core that's what Rise is about. Um, one line um, that I really love is in the Prayers for the Damned. I'm just a creature of a broken past that really uh, touched me. Yeah, we're all um, looking for a second chance. Yeah, and... Uh, it's true, right? I guess we are what, what, uh, what our past made us. Yeah. Um, what were the most crucial experiences that made you become Nikki Six? Well, I mean, I think it, my, my, my deepest, deepest core was the thing that's haunted me the most and it still haunts me is the feeling of abandonment. Uh, my dad leaving when I was young and my mom leaving me. One at three and one at six and never quite got over that. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a horrible feeling. And that, that's probably 
whenever I reference things, it always kind of goes back to those childhood issues. Mm -hmm. You still carry them with you, you know, they're like in your DNA. I don't care how much therapy, how much you realize it wasn't about you, still inside, it, it bothers you. Yeah, and it's hard letting that go, so. You, you do your best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, another line um, in Better Man, Heaven help me be a better man. Um, looking back to the last uh, years or decades of your life, is there something that, that you think that made you a better man? I mean, when we were writing that song, James and I were working on the lyrics with DJ in the room and we were just talking about like when when are you there when are you there and then we realized that we're never there we're never really the best we can be because when you're the best you can be it's a, you, where where are you you're probably at the end of your life you know it's a, yeah. it's a long journey I mean, it's a long battle and that's where we, we, ins we get inspired by people that they, they, they come back from the dead they come back from failure they come back from addiction they come back from injuries when they're athletes we're like yeah because it, it's us too right and that's kind of what that's about it's like you know it's like heaven help me be a better man I want to be the best I can be thank you very much sure that's a great interview Nikki thanks thank you, a lot man. appreciate it are seeing 6 a.m. for the very first time right here, right now. Am I right about that? All right, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to put your motherfucking hands up in the air like this, all right? Now, I want you to make a fist. Now, every time you hear the word rise come off this stage, I want to see you throw those motherfucking fists in the air. Will you do that for us? Are you ready to rise? <laughs> 